it's time for another tutorial. So today I'm going to be talking about using warbler over air dry clay to create a mask. So I'm going to be talking about using air dry clay uh, to make the mould over which you put the warbler and how you do that. Um, and just a few little bits of um, footage to show um, how the warbler goes over the top of the clay. So uh, I will demonstrate that just now. First things first, this is what I'm actually making. So this is a mask for my Haman Khan costume. Um, I made a te paper template first just to check the sizing and the proportions. It goes over the top of her head like so. So that's what I'm hoping to end up with with the finished product. So when I was making this I decided to make these edges, so here and here, using the clay and this middle bit here um, just to get the right shape uh, there's a lot of feathering on it that I wanted to try and replicate so that was the point of doing that and then these straps in between the two wings and the bird's body there and these side bits I'm going to make using warbler folded over craft foam so that's the overall plan for making this actually come together but what I'm going to demonstrate as part of this tutorial is how I'm making these bits. So one of the first things that I did was that I used my paper template and traced over it on some baking paper which I have taped to my cutting mat um, and that's just to give a outline to mould against using the uh, air drying clay which I will show you just now. This is the air drying clay. I've got it kept in this airtight box in order to stop it from drying out because, you know, it's air dry clay. That's kind of what it does if you leave it out. So it comes in a foil packet originally, but I've used part of it, which is why it lives in here now. This is the stuff. So it comes in a plastic wrapping that obviously you need to undo. So this stuff is pretty easy to work with. It does mould itself pretty nicely. When you break a bit off, you'll realise that it feels quite moist in your hands. If I bring it in a bit closer, you can see, hopefully, that it's got tiny little filaments on it. There we go, you can see just there. So there's actually tiny little bits of nylon embedded into this to give it a bit more structural stability, otherwise it would just squidge everywhere. Um, so when you are working with this, you can see it's quite pliable. But the longer you leave it, the more it starts to dry out and it becomes stiff and difficult to work with. And what you'll find is that it'll start to develop um, cracks in it. Um, if that starts to happen and you haven't finished working with it, then all you need to do is just get some water. So I've got a bit of water here. So you just um, dip a little bit of it onto your fingers and then just rub it into the palm of your hand. And then you can just mould the clay between your wet palms and that will moisten it up again so that you can carry on working with it. Um, you can also use water to smooth off surfaces as well so once you've actually say I moulded this into a sort of tube shape here um, you can see as I work with it it's already um, starting to develop some cracks in it when I stretch it as you can see there so you just need to just keep topping up with water every now and again. But if you're moulding with it and it does start getting like that again, all you need to do is just wet your finger, rub it over the top. You see all the cracks have disappeared. So you can actually just smooth off your surfaces using that method. Otherwise, there's not really much to air dry clay. Um, once you've finished working with it, you do need to leave it until it's completely dry before you start putting warbler over the top of it. I would say at least leave it to dry overnight, if not for a full 24 hours if possible. Um, and the reason for that is because later on when you're putting mold, uh, the warbler over the top to mould it, you're going to be putting Vaseline on it. And so if you haven't let it dry properly, then it will start to deform when you try and put the hot warbler over the top of it. So just make sure it's completely dry before you get started with it. You don't necessarily have to use clay to put over warbler, you can use lots of different things um, to put underneath warbler rather. Um, 
I'm just using clay because I've got a really specific shape that I wanted to recreate but if you had something that already existed then yeah absolutely you can just put some uh, warbler over the top of it and just mould it to shape bearing in mind of course a warbler is hot and therefore if you have something that's heat damageable then the heat will damage it but the clay is just a nice option for if you're wanting something pretty specific and you can't quite get the right shapes that you need Haman's mask is a bit weird like that which is why I've chosen to use this stuff so you can mould the clay using clay tools which I've got some of here so this one's got a sort of blade shape on it and it's got a nice point and then you've got a curved end here that you can use to smooth off bits of clay and this one here is just a pointy thing that you can use to sort of roll and poke the clay with um, again it's pretty easy to use I'll just get a bit more water on my hands to make that pliable again So if I just roll that out, I'll show you how I used it to get the um, wing shape that I've used on the mask. Because I've already made the clay mask bits, which I'll show you in a minute. So I've just made a kind of oblong shape here. I'm just going to use this bladed clay tool here to just put some um, wing marks into this. and just using it to just indent the clay basically and just smear it slightly sideways and then you can just rub to and forth you're on the baking paper so you're not doing any damage to the cutting mat or anything really and then the same again Again, you can just pick it up and move it around, it's not really a big deal. And if you just, if you make a mistake, you can always just roll it back up into a ball and start again. Again, it's not really a big problem. So you can also dip the uh, clay tool in a bit of water if you want to just kind of smooth as well as uh, shape, which is what I've done just then. And there we go done so as you can see it's really easy to work with um the other thing that you can do as well just um roll this back up again apply a reasonable amount of pressure when you're rolling it together just to uh get rid of the uh clay fold areas just wish it all together you can see again it's starting to become a bit cracked so the clay will absorb um uh, your hands will absorb moisture from the clay so you do need to uh, keep your hands moist while you're um, working with it there we go see the cracks have disappeared now that I've uh, wet my hands so if you wanted to um, put two bits of clay together you can um, do this pretty easily so all you need to do is you just need to um, scratch the clay up a little bit on the two bits that you're putting together just kind of like that, you don't, it doesn't have to be particularly precise do the same on the other bit it's just to give something for it to kind of mash into and then you can just put them together like that and there we go and then if you wanted to smooth the edges into each other you can use the curvy bit of this tool here and you can just do that like so so I've just used that to just merge the two areas together and there we go so that's the kind of stuff that you can do with these tools but as well as for clay these are also good for warbler as I will demonstrate shortly 
So this is all the stuff that we need to do the warbler over the air dry clay. So first things first, I've got my clay sculpts. So these are the bits of Herman's mask that I want to put warbler over the top of. The next thing that I need is Vaseline. This is what you are going to use to protect your air dry clay sculpt from the heat of the warbler when it's been heated up in order to form it over the top of the clay. The other thing that it does as well is makes it easier to take the warbler off the clay form after you've finished. So it's kind of like a mould release in a way but we're kind of doing it in reverse because we're putting the warbler over the top of this. So that's why you need that. Here's the clay tools again. I forgot to mention before that these were pretty cheap. They were like £1.25 each or something. Um, and they came from the local art store. So they're pretty easy to get hold of. You don't need that many of them. I found that these two were sufficient. You also need a heat gun. Strap saws are optional. Um, so for the heat gun, you can also use a hairdryer as an alternative. But the heat gun heats it up nice and quickly, nice and evenly. And this cost about £20 from the local hardware store. It was really quite cheap. So again, not a huge expenditure in the grand scheme of things. And you will get more consistent results with a heat gun compared to using a hairdryer. So I would recommend that. So that's actually everything you need. So we're ready to get started. I'll show you one that I've done earlier. I've partially cut this. So this is the left hand wing. So this is after I've popped it over the clay and then heat moulded it. So that's what we're going to end up with at the other end. You can see I've already partially started cutting it to shape as well. But we'll do some more of that later. So first things first, you need to cover your clay thing that you want to sculpt in Vaseline. Lovely! So just slather it on, don't be shy about it. Gonna put a big dollop in the cracks. And then I'll use the clay tool in a minute to get it into the bits at the side. It makes it really yucky to handle afterwards, but hey ho, such is life. The point of doing this basically is to make sure that regardless of which side of the warbler that you're using, warbler has a rough side and a shiny side. The shiny side has a bit of glue on it to stick it to whatever you want to stick it to. So obviously you don't really want to stick it to your mould, you want to be able to take it off the mould. So regardless of which side of the warbler you're using, um, if you've got the Vaseline on it shouldn't affect your ability to remove it after you've finished. So I'm going to put a little bit on the underside as well, particularly this bit at the bottom here, because I might want to fold it under just to get the shape that I want. Get the nice sharp corners that I'm after. But you don't need to put too much on the bottom side. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm now going to use the clay tool to get the Vaseline into these little side bits here. So you can actually just um, dip your clay tool into the Vaseline. Again, you don't have to be too precise about it in the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge problem as long as there's not too many points of adhesion on it, it's, that's the main thing. Okay, that'll do. So I now have Vaseline all over my hands which makes operating the video camera absolutely lovely. 
So we're now just about ready to go with actually starting this, but if you have a look at what I've made, you can see that I've got an extra layer of clay underneath here. So I've tried to layer up the wings a little bit, the feathers on the wing, uh, to get a bit more of a 3D effect. So if I were to put warbler over the top of this, like an entire massive sheet of warbler, then um, this particular bit would not come out very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little extra bit of warbler just over this bit alone, so that when I put a large sheet of warbler on and mould all these bits, I don't need to worry about this bit too much because it'll already have been covered and it will have a nice defined line. So that's why I'm going to do that. But first I need to get all the Vaseline off my hands. So I've got a random scrappy bit of warbler that I had lying around to put onto this under layer of feather here. Um, you can see it's a bit buckled because I've already heated it previously. Now you can reheat warbler quite a bit and that's fine, it's not the end of the world, but when you're working with warbler ideally you want to just kind of cut down what you're using beforehand so that you're not reheating it over and over and over again. Okay, so I've got a bit to put on here, but we don't need that side bit there either. Okay, there we go. So that's going to go over the top of that, basically. So I have the heat gun here, ready to go. I'm just going to use it on a low setting. You don't need loads of heat for warbler. As you can see, it's all floppy now, I've got to work with it quickly. So you just pop it on. It's a little bit burny to the touch, but not too bad. But you can just use your clay tools to uh, sort it out. So I'm just dipping this in a little bit of Vaseline, just to give it a bit of slippiness. And you can just get some nice uh, edges there using the blade bit. And then... I can use this part. So the warbler is quite slippy over the Vaseline. So I'm just using both clay tools simultaneously to just anchor it in place. Because if I push one side without anchoring the other, then it will just slide over the top of the warbler instead of actually moulding to the shape of it. And if there's any extra bits, you can just uh, cut them off. It's not a big deal. And there we go. So that's one little bit done. The next thing I'm going to do is get the big sheet of warbler. This is far too big for this little thing, so I need to cut it. Okay, so this this is cooled down quite a lot now. I can just kind of touch it and it's fine. So I'm just going to turn this around so that I can do the back side first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat mould it down this edge first and then I'll do all the fancy moulding bits on the side afterwards. So I've just stuck this over the top of that. I can actually just heat this on the clay now because I'm not actually applying the heat gun directly to the clay surface which I did earlier because I'm a moron and I shouldn't have done that. Um, right so let's heat this up. So I'm just going to heat this on one side. I'm not going to heat this side. I'm going to heat this bit. Okay, 
so you don't need to massively overheat it. Okay, let's get started. So again, a bit of Vaseline just to keep the tool sliding over the top of the warbler surface. This blade tool is brilliant. So I'd sort of move this over a little bit too much, but I just slid it back sideways again because it just slides over the top of the Vaseline really easily. So this side's a little bit stiff still because I haven't heated it quite enough, but that's okay. I've got a little bit of um, shaping to do at the top here, but I'm not worrying about it too much at the moment. I can just reheat it a little bit more later. See, I got a little bit lump there. Just there. That's just because there's a bit of wobbler there underneath that I need to cut off. But that's okay. Not a big problem. Okay, so that's one side done. So you see, you, you can stretch the warbler a little bit just to get it into the places that you need to. And try and try and keep it flat against the paper afterwards if you can, it just preserves the shape nicely. And that's the first part done. So on here you can see this lump that I didn't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off the clay mould. You see it pops off really easily because of all the Vaseline. This is the problem, so there's a bit here that's raised up and that's what's causing the lump on the warbler layer above. So what I need to do is I need to actually just pop that off. Again, comes off really easily because of the Vaseline. I just need to cut these bits here and here, just to make it a little bit more tidy so that the Vaseline, uh, the uh, warbler goes over the that section a bit more neatly without any lumps. I'm just going to cut this using a sharp craft knife now. So I've just put a new blade on this to make it nice and easy to cut. So warbler is made out of wood particles. So you just have to be patient with cutting it, otherwise it'll crack, which you don't want. So you kind of saw it in a way, really. And there we go. So that's looking a bit tidier now. So that should just slot back on again. Onto here, like so. And there we go. So that's a lot neater now and I won't need to worry about the lumps. Clear all the warbler scraps out of the way and anything else that you're worried about getting underneath it. And now I can put this back on again. I don't have to worry about that lumpy bit anymore now. So now what I can do is I can heat this side now and start moulding the actual feathers. Open the Vaseline ready on standby. So you can see I've slightly overheated it here. 
So these shiny bits are where it started the bubble because I've heated it too much. So just keep an eye out for patches like that. You either need to hold the heat gun further away or just start moving it in passes up and down to distribute the heat more evenly. For me it's not that big of a deal because there's going to be a million layers of um, PVA, gesso, whatever on top of this. Right, enough yakking, I need to get to work. So more Vaseline on my clay tool. First thing I'm going to do is just smooth down this bit here to get rid of that lump. So again, you want to use two clay tools side by side to get those nice points and to just avoid the warbler from slipping and sliding over the top. There's quite a sh uh, deep bit here, so I'm just popping that in. When you've got something that is quite deep like this, you will sometimes put holes in the warbler because it's been heated, it is going to be more susceptible to being punctured. This is not the end of the world for something like this. It's going to have a lot of painting and shading done anyway on it, so I'm not deeply concerned. Moving on to the bottom parts now. I've got a nice point there on that one. So I'm using this one to brace the warbler and then I'm just mashing that against it to get it nice and pointy. Now I've got to try and keep that in place now for this bit of the side here. So I'm going to use the thinner end of this tool to just mark that out and then use the blade of this one to trace around the sides. So that started to cool now, I can't do anything much more with that without reheating it, but as you can see I've got a nice defined set of points there which I'm quite happy with. This one could do with a little bit more pointiness, I'm just doing that with my fingers. So the warbler is now cool enough that I can just touch it without having to worry about burning myself, which is always a bummer when you do that. Okay, so that's the bottom bit done, so I'm now going to have to reheat this top bit so I can do the wings at the top here. Now the warbler's already warm, so I don't need to heat it for that long. Stop! Okay, so I'm onto this end here now. hold this side to do this bit at the top here get a nice point and just this last bit And there we go. So, that's me finished. I now need to wait for the warbler to cool completely before I remove it from the clay mould. 
The reason for this is because the clay is possibly likely to have cracked underneath this. So once I take it off, it's possible I might not necessarily be able to use that mould again. If I've put enough Vaseline on, it shouldn't crack too badly. But we'll wait and see once I've taken it off. Um, the other thing I might need to do is just sort out this side because I've got a little bit of bubbling here which might need a little bit of filing off. But otherwise this is good to be cut once it's cooled. Okay, it's time to take this off. Da -da -da -da, the moment of truth. So as you can see this is pretty well embedded in the warbler. Um, so let's have a go at trying to get that out. So the warbler's a little bit bendy, got a little bit of give in it, so I'm going to try and get a purchase on it. Oh, do break. I might need the assistance of my trusty play tool here to try and get this out. So I can try and prise it out. It's mostly because I've moulded it around the edges so much. Come on, I believe in you. The other one came out way more easily than this. <laughs> So I've just popped it. There we go. Okay, so, ah, it worked, thank goodness. Let's have a look at the state of the clay. So you can see there's a couple of cracks in it here and here and here as well. So there's a couple of bits that I either missed with the Vaseline or that I've just cracked because I haven't um, pressed the clay together properly in those places. But overall, it's actually in pretty good condition and I can reuse that, so that is nice. So, that's what the inside of that looks like. I did sort of toy with the idea of getting some friendly plastic and just kind of using this as a mould to generate another one, but um, I'm actually pretty happy with this, I think it'll be alright. So, you can see, if I hold it up to the light, you can see where the really thin areas of Wobbler are, where I've stretched it to get it over the mould. So those bits are going to be a little bit more fragile, but once I've built up enough layers of gesso, varnish, PVA, whatever, it should be pretty alright. So, now that I've done this, the next thing that I need to do is to cut this out. So, for some bits of this, like the wing feather bits, craft knife is the only way, but for these long bits down the side, I can actually use this rotary cutter to do it. So you can actually just put it at an angle here next to the edge and just roll back and forth and it will slice through the warbler quite neatly there. Just be careful when you're going back and forth that you don't catch other bits of the warbler on the way out. So that's why having it at an angle is a good idea. But again, same as before, this wood pulp you're basically just sawing through it really. There we go, that's a nice clean edge there, as you can see. It's a bit there where I've actually accidentally cut into the warbler going backwards, but it's not a big deal again, that'll get covered up. So I'll do this bit now. Oh, I should add, right, don't put your thumb here, because you'll end up just slicing your thumb open. Right, I keep doing that and I really shouldn't, that's what this bit here is for, you meant to put your thumb here. But I don't, because I'm stupid. I've 
cut around most of this edge here but obviously it's not come away because I've not completely cut all the warbler off so let's just go this way Slice my thumb open there because I just put that in the wrong place, but I didn't, so it's okay. Right, there we go. So that's looking pretty neat and tidy now, those edges. So now I have to spend 20 million years with a craft knife just gradually sawing all of these bits off, which will take ages, but hey ho, that is cosplay. Right, so that is pretty much everything. So yeah, you just heat the warbler, stick it over the top of your mould. Use the clay tools with a bit of Vaseline on them to uh, do these bits in the corner here, and that's you. And ta-da! Here is the finished result. I hope that the tutorial was useful, and thank you for watching.